John Dryden's Absalom and Achetophel Who is John Dryden? John Dryden is an English poet, literary critic, translator, and playwright who was made a poet laureate in 1668. He was born in 1631 and died in 1700 so that he dominated the literary scene during the 17th century or the era known as the Restoration England. Of course, you know that this period was called the Restoration because King Charles II restored uh, the monarchy and uh, the theatres uh, and the importance of uh, the English church. Um, the importance of uh, John Dryden is clear uh, um, as uh, uh, the literary circles called his age the age of uh, Dryden. His subject matter was often factual or uh, speaking about facts or real events. He wrote uh, satires and used heroic uh, couplets. Heroic couplets uh, is a kind of rhyme scheme in which uh, every two successive lines of verses have the same end rhyme. Absalom and uh, at Shitofel uh, uh, is a political satire written by John Dryden. The poem is an allegory or a symbolic story that uses the story of the rebellion of Absalom, uh, the illegal son uh, of uh, King David against King David as uh, the basis for discussion for the background to the Monmouth uh, Rebellion in 1685 and the Popish Plot uh, in 1678 uh, and the Exclusion Crisis. So here uh, the poem uh, introduces uh, a parallelism uh, between uh, two stories. Uh, the first story is the story of uh, King David and one of his uh, so many sons uh, called Absalom. And uh, this is a story is taken from the Bible, uh, particularly from the Old Testament. Uh, the second story is uh, the story of the uh, Duke of Monmouth, uh, the illegal son of King Charles II. Uh, this um, uh, son uh, tried uh, to uh, make uh, uh, or arrange a rebellion against his uh, father Charles II in order to take the throne. Uh, this uh, uh, leads to uh, a group of uh, complicated uh, uh, political uh, events uh, such as the Popish Plot and the Exclusion Crisis, and um, uh, this will be clear during uh, the lecture. The Biblical Background the story of Absalom's revolt is told in the second book of Samuel in the Old Testament of the Bible, chapters 14 to 18. 
as you know that the Bible is divided into Old Testament and New Testament. The New Testament is uh, concerned by the miracles of Jesus Christ and his uh, disciples. While the Old Testament uh, narrates uh, the stories of uh, the prophets uh, who came before Jesus Christ. Absalom, uh, the son of King David, rebels against his father King David. Um, Absalom is very beautiful and uh, was distinguished by his uh, extraordinary abundant hair, which uh, symbolizes his pride. King David uh, has uh, um, a famous advisor uh, in the name of uh, Atchetovel. He joins Absalom's rebellion. Another advisor of King David uh, called Hushai plots with David to pretend to defect uh, or to take the sign of uh, Absalom and gives uh, Absalom a piece of advice that uh, plays into David's hands so that we have a father called King David. We have a proud uh, uh, son called Absalom, two advisors of uh, the father uh, joined the rebellion of the son. The first one is uh, um, a Chetovil and he truly uh, joins the rebellion of the son. The second advisor, Hushai, uh, pretends to take the side of the son, but in fact he is a double agent who wants to take uh, uh, information or news to tell it uh, to King David. The result uh, was that Absalom takes the advice of the double agent, Hushai, over the good advice of uh, Chetovil who realizing that the rebellion is doomed to failure, goes home and hangs himself. Absalom is killed after getting caught by his hair in the thick branches of a great oak, so that the two leaders of the rebellion died. Uh, the advisor was killed and uh, Absalom uh, was caught from uh, his hair in the forest. The death of his son Absalom causes David enormous personal grief. Of course, uh, this uh, shows uh, that um, David um, is a father before being a king. He got uh, sad upon knowing uh, um, that uh, his son uh, has been dead. The historical background of uh, or the historical context of writing this poem in 1681 in England, the King Charles II was in advanced years. He had had a number of mistresses, of course, as a youth, and produced a number of illegitimate children. So that as a youth, King Charles II had many illegal relationships uh, that produced many illegal children. However, he had no legal heir. One of these was James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, who was very popular or famous, both for his personal charisma and his, further, his fervor for the Protestant cause. So people liked 
uh, James Scott or the Duke of Monmouth, one of the illegal children of King Charles II, uh, for two reasons. Firstly, he had a charisma, and secondly, uh, he is uh, enthusiastic about the Protestant uh, cause. Charles II had no legitimate heirs, and his brother, the future James II of England, was openly a Roman Catholic, so that he was not welcomed to uh, the British crown. When Charles' health suffered, there was a panic or fear in the House of Commons over the potential uh, or the possibility for the nation being ruled by a Roman Catholic king. The Earl of Shaftesbury uh, had sponsored an ad uh, ad um, and advocated the exclusion bill, uh, which would prevent uh, James II from succeeding or getting into the throne. So, uh, he proposes that uh, um, James II uh, will uh, be prevented from uh, being uh, a king for England because he was a Catholic, not a Protestant. But this uh, uh, bill uh, was blocked or... Uh, uh, rejected by the House of Lords on two occasions or two times. In the spring of uh, 1681, at the Oxford Parliament, Shaftesbury appealed to Charles II to legitimate Monmouth. Of course, it's very silly. He asked the king uh, to declare that. Uh, uh, Duke of Monmouth is uh, not an illegal child, uh, but he is uh, a legitimate child, and uh, this is uh, nonsense. Monmouth was caught uh, preparing to rebel and seek the throne, and Shaftesbury was suspected of fostering or supporting this rebellion. In 1681, Shaftesbury was seized or arrested and charged with high treason. A trial before a jury picked by Whig sheriffs. Whig is a political British party. Acquitted him. Later, after the death of his father and unwilling to see his uncle James II become king, the Duke of Monmouth executed or carried out his plans and went into full revolt so that the son or James Scott or Duke of Monmouth insisted that he repeated his rebellion once during the life of his father and the second time after the death of his father in order to prevent his uncle from getting into the throne. The Monmouth rebellion uh, was put down or failed and in 1685 the duke was executed or killed. The poem. The poem was written in 1681. Dryden's poem tells the story of the first rebellion. The first rebellion took place during the life of King Charles II. By comparing Duke of Monmouth to Absalom, the, the son of King David. Also, the poet uh, compares Charles II to King David. And Anthony Ashley Cooper, or the first Earl of Shaftesbury, is compared to Ed Chetovel. Ed Chetovel is uh, the advisor of uh, Duke of Monmouth. 
The poem paints Buckingham, an old enemy of Dryden's, into Zimri, the unfaithful servant. So uh, the poem compares many contemporary political figures into um, religious figures from the Old Testament who stand for uh, treachery or uh, um, who were bad people. The poem places most of the blame for the rebellion on Shaftesbury, the advisor, and makes Charles II a very loving man as a father and as a king. This is an extract from the poem. In this extract, John Dryden focuses on uh, the character of uh, the advisor uh, um, Shaftesbury. Of these, the falls uh, at Chateauville was first. Uh, in the previous part, uh, he was uh, speaking about uh, um, treacherous people or unfaithful advisor and uh, Chateauville was one of them or the first of them. A name to all succeeding ages cursed. Cursed means cursed. All succeeding ages, all coming ages. So that John Dryden Satirizes, uh, satirizes the character of uh, Chetoville or uh, Lord Shaftesbury or uh, Anthony Ashley Cooper that he was um, a false or unfaithful man who was cursed in all ages. He was famous for close designs or uh, close plans or schemes or intrigues and the crooked councils fit. Crooked councils means uh, um, not good uh, advice. He was fit uh, for that. Sages means uh, he was uh, a wise man. Bold, may be courageous, turbulent of wit. He has something wrong in his wit. Restless, he refuses to take rest. Unfixed in principles and the place. Dryden describes Ashley Cooper or Shaftesbury as being unfixed or usually moving um, both in his moral attitude and in places so he is not um, a wise man who stands in one place and holds to one opinion in power unpleased which means when Nashaft Sperry takes uh, a prominent position, he is uh, dissatisfied, impatient of disgrace, uh, which means he always seeks uh, for uh, uh, scandals. Uh, a fiery soul which working out its way. He means that this man is working to destroy himself. Uh, Fritted the pygmy body to decay. So John Dryden means that the soul of uh, um, Shaftesbury confines or restricts uh, um, the deformed body of Shaftesbury and will lead to his destruction or ruin and over informed the tenement of clay. Clay is mud or the material from which man is created. 
a daring pilot in extremity. Daring pilot means he is over ambitious. Uh, he, he goes to extremity means that he is not a moderate man. Pleased with the danger when the waves went high. Lord Shaftesbury is not uh, um, a psychologically balanced uh, person so that he becomes very satisfied or happy when there is a coming danger or uh, when the waves are high. He saw the storms. Storms means uh, tempests, and uh, this means that he is someone who seeks uh, or searches for problems. But for a calm, unfit, uh, this person is not suitable to live in a calm or peaceful environment. Would steer to nigh the sense to boast his wit. He walks near the sand because he is short, not tall. Uh, boast means to show off his wit. Great wits are sure to madness near allied. John Dryden describes him that he has a strong intelligence and this makes him very near to madness because there is a very thin division or partition between madness and intelligence. And the thin partitions do their bounds divide. This uh, very thin partition divides uh, the area between madness and uh, intelligence or genius. Else why should he with wealth and honor be blessed? This one is blessed uh, by both uh, fortune and honor. Refuse his age the needful hours of rest. This one refuses to take rest which is needed to his body in, in this advanced age. Punish a body which he could not please so that by refusing to take rest he punishing his body uh, which is restless all the time. Bankrupt of life. Bankrupt means he lost or he doesn't have any more life. Uh, this is uh, the extract that uh, describes or satirizes uh, uh, the character of um, Lord Shaftesbury or Anthony Ashley Cooper, the advisor of the uh, Duke of Monmouth, who is uh, compared to the biblical figure at Chateauville. Uh, Dryden sees this person as an unfaithful person uh, who uh, proves to be unfaithful to King Charles II and uh, tries to uh, support the rebellion uh, by uh, Duke of Monmouth against the legal uh, king. Um, notice uh, that the rhyme scheme is a heroic couplet uh, because uh, it, uh, it's uh, A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. Uh, if we look uh, at the end of um, the last word uh, of uh, every line uh, of verse, first, cursed, so the rhyme scheme A, A, Fit, wit, BB, place, disgrace, uh, CC, way, DK, DD, uh, and so on. The genre is uh, political satire. Uh, the poem is uh, full of uh, religious uh, and political uh, allusions. Uh, 
It's full of uh, rhetorical uh, questions which uh, attract the attention of uh, the reader uh, and expresses the astonishment of uh, uh, the poet. The poem is uh, a critical attack on the character of Lord Shaftesbury. Dryden describes uh, this person as being a curse to all the coming ages. He was a curse because of his foolish advice and his designs or schemes uh, of fooling people. Then Dryden describes him satirically by saying that he is very wise, bold, violent, worried, unfixed on principles and changing his places all the time. Lord Shaftesbury is never happy. When he is in power, he always wants for disgrace. He has a nervous soul that never rests and which leads his body to decay. Moreover, he is a bold leader who never leads to the right way. He becomes very pleased when the waves come high and he becomes in danger. He searches for danger. Shaftesbury is very close to madness as he is very clever and there is very thin division between cleverness and the madness. Here, Dryden is satirical. Finally, Dryden asks himself satirically by saying, Why should a person like him has to be respected by others? Shaftesbury has always punished his body by trying not to have rest hours. Yet, uh, uh, though he never had rest, he wasted all his life doing nothing useful. The poem is based on satire, which is one of the main characteristics of the Augustan or Neoclassical Age. The poem is written in heroic couplets, which is one of the main features of the Augustan Age. As classical poets concentrate on the form more than the content. The poem, as neoclassical, has a criticism of the rules, rulers, and poetic matters. Dryden criticizes people who are evil and foolish. The poem has organic unity. Through each heroic couplet, we have new ideas. The poem addressed our reason more than it addresses our emotions. The style is poetic and elevated. The poem has the antithesis or contrast between sagittius and madness, or wisdom and the madness, and the fiery soul and the calm. This is the end. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.